You're listening to a Rock Candy podcast. Hi, I'm Peterson Toscano, and this is Bubble and Squeak, a podcast with uncanny sounds, funny interludes, and stories, most weird, many true. Okay, here's episode three. Our show today comes in three parts. Part one, a story entitled, Did You Just Masturbate? Part two, a reading from the lost gospel of Thaddeus. And part three, a sound slice. Did you just masturbate? A true story. I was 27 years old. I'd been married to a woman for two years, living in New York City, in Harlem. I was married to a woman because I believed I was no longer gay. In fact, I had good evidence that things had turned around. I hadn't been with a man since before we married. In fact, I hadn't even masturbated in two years. It was Sunday night, after Sunday morning service, Sunday evening service at our church, we prepared for the week, made our lunches, set out our clothes, went to bed. But I was restless. I don't know what it was. I wasn't thinking about anything in particular. I just couldn't sleep. At one point, I got up. I really don't know what time of the night it was, but I walked down the hallway, long hallway in our Harlem apartment, Turned to the left to the bathroom. And in the bathroom, I masturbated. It was the first time in two years. And it wasn't that I'd been thinking about it all day. I wasn't tempted. I just did it. I didn't even have a fantasy to go with it. I just did it. And immediately afterwards, I felt horrible. Like I had done something awful. Like I had betrayed my marriage vows. I cleaned up and then went back to bed. I very quietly crawled into bed and laid on my side with my back towards my wife looking out into the living room. But moments later, she rolled over to cuddle, to spoon me. And I felt her thick hair fall on my cheek. It uh, it was still damp from her shower earlier in the evening. She whispered, Did you just masturbate? I didn't want to lie, and I definitely didn't want to tell the truth. I replied, Why? Meaning, why do you ask? She leaned in closer, Because I felt a terrible presence of evil enter the apartment. And this made sense, because we went to a Pentecostal church, that there were evil spirits of any possible sort for any possible problem. It was easier than admitting the obvious. I didn't know what to say. But back then, we had a Bible verse for everything. Bible verses were used to guard off evil spirits, to put someone in their place, to give hope and encouragement. So I said to her, Well, we know the devil is a liar and the father of lies. Good night. And we never spoke of it again. But the next day, the next day, I geared up for spiritual battle. I put on the whole armor of God, and for almost two hours in my private prayer time, I railed against the enemy, the evil one, Satan, who was trying to destroy our family. Because it was so much easier screaming against the devil than accepting reality.
For the longest time, scholars dismissed rumors of a gospel written by the apostle Thaddeus, who also goes by the name Judas, not to be confused with Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Legend states St. Paul had a major falling out with Thaddeus over a seating chart at the pristine council of Corinth. Paul then banned Thaddeus's gospel. Well, in 2012, self-described Bible scholar Peterson Toscano traveled to Malta and met with a Roman Catholic dissident who goes by the code name Vashti. Toscano learned that a torn parchment of the Thaddeus Gospel was hidden deep in a Jesuit vault. Sadly, the parchment sustained much damage. Whole sections are missing, but for the first time in nearly 2,000 years, the lost gospel of Thaddeus has seen the light. Scholars are scouring over it. They're especially excited about the many references to food in the gospel. We now share with you a recording of selected excerpts from the gospel of Thaddeus. Early one day, as they walked towards the temple, a leper sat by the fig stall and called out to Jesus. But Thaddeus, heading towards the figs, protested. Just keep walking, Rabbi. He's faking anyway. Later that day, Jesus stopped to help a man on the steps of the temple. Thaddeus groaned. Oh, man, not another leper. I mean, oh, wow, what a lovely tattered robe you have on. In the middle of the night, a terrible storm broke out and rocked their boat. Even the seasoned fishermen among them despaired. In the midst of the storm, Jesus came to them, walking on the water. Over the winds and the waves, Thaddeus shouted out to Jesus, Rabbi, did you remember to bring the hummus? Thaddeus then turned to the others. You know the pita is going to be soggy, but it's okay. I've really been overdoing the carbs lately. One day, after they returned from the market, they found Jesus alone with a woman at the well. Thaddeus grumbled. Hmph, quiet time praying my foot. He's a total player. The disciples approached Jesus and the lone woman. Thaddeus turned up his nose. Good God, who designed her sandals, the Maccabees? As they entered the town, a demon-possessed man rushed out from the tombs towards Jesus. Thaddeus, startled, turned to Thomas and shrieked, Yikes! Bad hair day ahead! Jesus asked the man, What is your name? He replied, Legion, for we are many. Thaddeus, bored with this exchange, looked around for a food stall, then noticed a herd of pigs grazing contentedly on a nearby hillside. Thaddeus cooed. Oh my God, look, Jesus, they got babies. Immediately, Jesus began commanding the demons out of the man. He then told them to leave and instead go into the herd of pigs. Thaddeus cried, Oh, great, now they're going to think we're some kind of anti-pork Jewish sorcerers. With a loud cry, the demons left the man and entered the pigs. Thaddeus wondered aloud, Um, consent? I'm just saying... No longer possessed, the man begged to follow Jesus. Thaddeus blurted out, Ah, no, thank you. We already have a boatload of dysfunction right here. Right here. One day, Jesus sat on a large stone, and the crowds gathered around him as he taught them. Jesus said unto them, Let the little children come unto me. Thaddeus inserted, Yeah, but first let them wash their dirty, sticky fingers, okay? Jesus said, If you want to be perfect, go, sell everything you have, and give it to the poor. Thaddeus reasoned, Yeah, it sounds good, but then the poor will be imperfect. I mean, right? Later that evening, they arrived at the home of Lazarus and her sister Martha and Mary. While Martha prepared the evening meal, Mary sat at Jesus' feet with the disciples. Martha complained, Rabbi, tell my sister to help me with the women's work. Jesus replied, Leave Mary alone. She has chosen what is right for her. Thaddeus said, Rabbi, I'll help Martha with the meal. I mean, I don't mind. 
As Thaddeus and Martha served the food, Thaddeus turned to Jesus. Teacher, I know you let women come near, and you're all over the lepers, but I've been wondering about eunuchs. I mean, some of my best friends are eunuchs. And I have to say, some of the other disciples here are, well, they're not exactly eunuch friendly, if you know what I mean. So you may just want to drop a word or two about eunuchs at some point. Then turning to Simon Peter, Thaddeus said, Simon, I mean, Peter, could you please pass the tabbouli? Now, um, here we actually have a missing fragment. I'm so sorry. I wish we had more. But it is followed by this stunning, dramatic end to the gospel. As they watched Jesus ride away on a camel toward Egypt, Peter, who was also called Simon, asked Thaddeus, <clears throat> Judas, I noticed you're calling yourself Thaddeus these days, trying to distance yourself from the whole Judas Iscariot affair. But don't worry, I predict you will be forgotten. Just saying. Thaddeus approached Peter and slapped him on the right cheek and said, <laughs> Simon, according to the teachings of our Rabbi Jesus, you are now supposed to let me slap you on your left cheek, and then you need to forgive me. I'm just saying. Let me set the scene for you. I'm in the Cuban town of Vinales. It's west of Havana. Lots of coffee and tobacco farms form a patchwork around the town. My husband, Glenn, and I are staying at a casa in particular, a sort of government-approved bed and breakfast. It's early morning. I'm sitting on the back porch off the second-floor bedroom. The backyard is small, like the size of a New York City studio apartment. There's some places for washing clothes. <laughs> chickens. Lots of chickens. You've been listening to Bubble and Squeak. It's produced by me, Peterson Toscano. I pretty much just make this show for me. Oh, and my friend, Jen, who doesn't actually listen to podcasts, so she likely will never hear this. Also, many thanks to Jane Brazell for her help with the Gospel of Thaddeus. The Bubble and Squeak theme music is Worthless by The Jelly Rocks from the album Bang and Whimper. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to music. You also heard music from 11B7. And feel free to tweet at me, at P2Sun. That's the letter P, the number 2, S-O-N, at P2Sun. For more shows like this one, visit rockcandyrecordings.com. Rock Candy, like Bible Bash Podcast or Sacred Tension with Stephen Long. Now that one asks deep questions. You need to check these out, people. <laughs>